Hey, my name is uh, Eder Navacerrada and I work as a chief pilot for the Firebus fleet at SAP here in Sweden. The role of the firefighting aircraft is to provide support to the ground forces. Those guys on terrain are the guys putting the fires down and we help them. The fires normally occur in uh, steep terrain, rocky areas, remote and difficult access. So we can be the first one on the scene. We can travel close to 300 km per hour and then we can help them. Sometimes we can put the fire out completely. Sometimes we just lower the flames so they can gain access and they can finish the job. So once we get an alarm, then it goes through our OCC, our coordination center, and they will give us some basic information on the fire. They will look our maps and we will assess the water source, we will assess the fire area. Once we accept the mission, we have everything in place and everything is ready from the flight suit to our emergency and survival equipment. And then we get ready, we go to the aircraft, the aircraft is always prepared and then we just go. The coordination with the ground is really important. So we have a two-way radio communications and then we get some relevant information to us from them as any hazards and then the strategy that will help them the most. And likewise, we help them. We can see from the top, we have a very broad view of the fire. And sometimes we fly in and we may see other fires and then we report it and then we keep a good track of every fire. The strategy that we use to work on the fires is around the idea that we have to protect people and society. If there is any house, any human in danger, then we're going to protect them. And then we will take care of the rest. If the fire is small, then we drop straight on the fire, on the flames. And most of the times we can cover the whole size of the fire if we get there quick. We get there quick, we drop it right and we come back safe. Then if the fire is already pretty big, then we have to build a strategy to get to the head. But the head, if it's big already, it gets dangerous. There is a lot of turbulence, smoke, and then it's bad visibility and that's bad news for us. So we normally work from the flank, from the rear to, to the front, and then the ground forces, they can enter and they can finish the job that we have started by dropping on the, on the flames. If there are any spot fires ahead of the fires, then we take care of those because they will be the ones spreading forward faster. This aircraft, the Fireboss, is so effective because it's very versatile. We can be used as initial attack on a quick response and we can travel at 150 knots, which is close to 300 km per hour to the fire. Then we will get there very quick and that's crucial in the firefighting industry. If we get there quick, then we avoid these devastating mega fires. And if the water source is close, we can deliver up to 50,000 liters per water. Every drop is between 2,500 and 3,000 liters, and that will make a lot of water in the fire. That's really important. The drop system that we have on this aircraft is based on a precision computerized fire gate. This means that we can control the drop in a very precise manner from a very long drops up to 800 meters past the drops. And then also we can drop like a massive ball of water, three tons of water that could easily snap a tree. So we have all this range and it is as important to us as the surgical tools could be for a surgeon. One of the key features of this uh, precision computerized fire gate is that we can do split drops. This means that if we have 3000 liters, then we can do two, perhaps three drops with the idea to cross them and then cut the spread of the fire. It's very common that we do what we call scissor drops. So we can drop in a flank to the head on one side and then do turn around and do another drop crossing it in the middle that will close the spread of the fire and we will use it uh, very often. To refill the water, what we call the scooping maneuver, 
the idea is that we get so close to the water, still flying on a controlled manner, that then we can very gently touch the water and skim on the water. We don't stop, we don't have to stop to scoop. It's just the pressure of the water that fills the tank up. We touch down at about 75 to 80 knots, and then we maintain a speed of uh, 60, 65 knots during the scooping maneuver. And in 15 seconds, we get the whole hopper, the 3000 liters, completely full. So we have a way to check the amount of water that we have on a digital display, but we also have this window. And then you can see the marks in US gallons. So when the water is actually reaching this part, then we will have 400 gallons and it will continue to fill all the way to the top. And here we have the mark of 700 gallons. If it continues all the way to the very top of the hopper, we will have 800 gallons and it will basically overflow. So you will see some water splashing on the windshield. So this aircraft has uh, 1600 horsepower. That's like uh, more than 15 times the average horsepower of a car. It's really powerful and uh, we can get all that power pretty much instantly. It feels really, you feel attached to the seat when you power up. Then we can travel at speeds between 250 and 300 kilometers per hour. And uh, with the ground so close, you feel it really feels very fast. Then we can uh, land on, on the water without the, the landing gear, so we can retract the landing gear, but we can also work from the land. We can land on a normal runway and then we can fill it up with some hoses. So it's very versatile. This aircraft can uh, carry pretty much half its weight. That's very unusual with the aircraft. It's a, it's a lot of weight that this aircraft can take. And when we drop it, we drop half of the weight of the aircraft and that really makes a difference in the flight characteristics of the aircraft. As an aviator, I will say that uh, most of the challenges that I have encountered in my career have been in aerial firefighting. We fly very low, sometimes just uh, over the treetops, and then we fly very fast and we have to move the aircraft three-dimensionally, completely manual. There is no aids, there is no autopilot, and it's very basic. We call it the air tractor. It's like a tractor, basic, in the air. And then we need some uh, training and skills to be able to accomplish this mission in an efficient manner. Sometimes we encounter hazards. We can have uh, wires, power lines. We can have windmills. We have the smoke. It gets really turbulent. And uh, we have a lot of aircraft sometimes. We have to coordinate perhaps 10, 12, 15 aircraft in a very confined area. All of this, it is very challenging. We like it and we train for it. <laughs>